Welcome to the third video of asset base balance. And before we move and start talking about interpreting ABGs, it's very important to talk about anion gap and understand it well. Anion gap, anion, you know, in, in the extracellular fluid, there is positively charged molecules, we call them cations, and there is negatively charged molecules, we call them anions. So at in any space in the body, but here we talk about the extracellular fluid space, at any moment, cations should equal to anions charge-wise. So that means the ACF has to be electrically neutral at any moment. Looking at this now, the major cations in the extracellular fluids, we talk about sodium, okay? And the rest are minors. Minors, we talk about potassium, calcium, magnesium, right? And the main anions in the extracellular fluid, we talk about chloride, bicarb, there are some other molecules like phosphorus, uh, sulfuric acid, uh, albumin, etc. So these are at any moment should be equal to each other and cancel each other positives and negative charges. So let's, based on this, right, we have sodium on one hand okay the major cation and we have chloride and bicarb on the other hand major anions okay but we see there is some other extra anions and cations and for the sake of this lecture we're going to call them unmeasured cations you see and we're going to call this unmeasured anions and we said unmeasured cations that means talk about potassium magnesium calcium and unmeasured anions we're talking about sulfuric acid, uh, albumin, etc. So these positive charges here equal at any moment to negative charges here. This equation can be rearranged to n measured anions minus n measured cations equal to sodium minus the sum of bicarb and chloride, right? It's the same equation, we just rearrange things. The difference between unmeasured anions and unmeasured cations, we're going to call it anion gap. Let's call it AG. So anion gap equal to sodium minus the sum of bicarb and chloride. And the normal range for this depends on the lab and standard deviations, 2 to 12. Why, why this is important? What are we talking? So that means there is, let's say, the 12, right? There is 12 anion gaps. No, sorry, there's 12 anions that we need to add to the chloride and bicarb in order to cancel the sum of sodium and unmeasured cations. Why is this important? Now, when there is a production of certain acids, these acids made, the molecule of acid made of hydrogen ion, which is positively charged, plus anion, because you have hydrogen ion and you have a negatively charged molecule. So when the acid production, like lactic acid or keto acids, these acids will split, give a hydrogen ion, okay? The hydrogen ion, and it will give a negatively charged anions. So guess what's going to happen now? This hydrogen ion will start consuming of this bicarb. And this anion, because these things has to, this equation has to remain true all the time. This anion will add to the unmeasured anions. So for this equation to be true, the bicarb will go down. To keep this equation true, there's two options. Either this anions will be produced and add to the anion gap, and that way the equation will remain true, and the ana anion gap will go up, cruise anion gap. And because anion gap increase only when there is production of acids, so it's only important in when you think about metabolic acidosis. So anion gap with, uh, should not change with the pure metabolic alkalosis or other acid-based disturbances, change only with metabolic acidosis. Some metabolic acidosis, not all metabolic acidosis, because this principle, because it increase from acid production that will dissociate in hydrogen ion that will consume bicarb, lead to loss of bicarb, decrease bicarb because it's trying to buffer it, and add anion here. The other option to keep this equation, well, is that you add hydrogen ion, right? And to compensate for the loss of bicarb or decrease bicarb, you increase the chloride. And there will be this equation here. You will not, this, there will be no anion added here and the equation will remain true. Simply it's remain the same because you balanced the decrease in bicarb by increasing chloride. And that's what we call hyperchloremic normal anion gap metabolic acidosis because of this. So for hopefully this will make sense to you now when we talk about anion gap. 
anion gap increase anion gap always indicating acidosis actually any anion gap equal or more 20 always indicate there is increased anion gap metabolic acidosis regardless of ph bicarbonates of anything when you see this there is for sure increase anion gap metabolic acidosis regardless of everything so hopefully this makes it clear how the anion gap concepts created and all of that so understanding this will make things much easier for us next video we'll start interpreting or looking into how to interpret abgs after that we'll start talking about the different acid-base disturbances Thank you.